What is going on, Wolfpack? Savage here. Hope you're having a good day, and I hope that Warzone's been treating you well. In today's video, we will be breaking down a viewer submitted gameplay where he absolutely becomes the hunter and slays out in solo's game mode. We will be going through what he's doing and why he's making the decisions he's making in order to go out there and secure more solo wins. But before we get into the video, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We're closing in and so close to 100,000 subscribers. Also leave a like on the video. Let's break the YouTube algorithm and get this video to 1500 likes. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay. All right, here we are spectating my dude, Mr. F. Now I can't pronounce his name. However, he's pretty nutty with the gameplay. So I will be dropping his links in the description below as well. But he's a very aggressive player. So we're gonna be spectating him throughout this entire match and kind of getting in the head and the mind space of a player that's actually really, really good at the game. When you guys watch top tier players and top tier creators play, it's very hard to analyze why they're doing what they do. So here we are gonna walk you through their process. So first thing we're doing, landing Superstore. And as you guys know, it's been a little less hot here of late because of the update and the added buildings downtown, but we do have some combat going in here. All right, here we are popping dead silence, gonna go our, try our best to bust through here without making any noise. Notice how he's always ADSing towards the doors. That way he doesn't waste, that way he doesn't waste his, uh, his dead silence. You guys pop dead silence, make damn sure that you guys do not bust through doors because otherwise you just wasted it. Now, as far as the enemy right there, he was spraying and praying, but it was the best that he could do in the position he was in. And why is that? Because he put himself in a corner and the only thing he could do from here is either run straight or just hopefully outshoot us. Because he was stunned, it is what it is. And he tried his best to outplay the situation. This right here is exactly why I tell you guys, stop doing this. If there is a room where it's one way in and one way out, unless you have nutty movement and you can kind of work around that room like a ballerina, don't do this shit. Crouch prone in a corner, bad very bad stop it all right but that shouldn't be it there are more gunshots going off outside to the east side and the northeast side of superstore so we could go take advantage of this and go ahead and push that we're using the heartbeat sensor quickly and efficiently i like that and also once you guys notice we used the dead silence and we went ahead and picked another one up guys you cannot sleep on these deadies especially if you guys are trying to increase your aggression um dead silence is the perfect way to do so right, another enemy popping up the north side of superstore right now trying to gather as many plates as possible All right, right now, honestly, I'd go ahead and push what I saw on the mini-map. I don't know if he saw him on the mini-map. The moment that he popped up originally over here, I would have started making my way to the outside to get go ahead and get that kill, right? And also the second ping, when he popped up over here, the moment that popped up as well, since I had a few plates, only three, but I still had enough to fight, I would have gone ahead and pushed over there also. Again, guys, if a dot pops up on the mini-map that alerts you of an enemy nearby, go ahead and take advantage of that knowledge because the longer you wait to go chase him down, he's going to move. He's not just gonna stand there. So the moment that he pops up, go ahead, take care of him and don't let him get out of your sight. We got an enemy on our right side and on the left side of us. We need to avoid being pushed. So he's working himself back to cover, trying to outplay this enemy. Fortunately, using dead silence. That right there, quick thinking, quick reaction time, right? When you're in the middle of combat, you always need to be aware of the tools at hand. This is not shit he picked up at a loadout. This is stuff he's been picking up as he's looting. He knew he had a C4. Now, the reason why I make a big deal about this is a lot of times, no matter whether you're diamond, bronze, plastic, it doesn't matter. Most players in the middle of a gunfight, they only rely on their guns. So in this situation, a lot of players would have gone out there tried their best to spray at the enemy. And if they would have ran out of ammo, they probably would have either forced the reload or just ran up to him and try to get the melee off on him. That's not the case at all. Either switch your weapons and try with your secondary gun or use your tacticals to your advantage. Don't allow the enemy to run away and plate up. Don't allow the enemy to push us like he was about to while we're forced to reload. Always use the tools at hand. So great, great reaction time by him. Just throwing the C4. Very, very basic, but at the same time, again, not a lot of players do this. All right, but I do believe there's still another target in here somewhere. Again, there were there were a couple pings that we haven't taken care of. I don't believe that that was the guy. Also, when we were using the heartbeat sensor, uh, we were heartbeating to the left to kill the guy to our right. So I don't believe it was him either. And here is another guy going to bust out. And this guy was looking up. Thankfully, he wasn't paying too much attention. I don't really know what he was doing. He was like debating on the zip line. Oh, shit. Yo, Merry Christmas. Thank you for the loadout, brother. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he was doing. As far as enemy in that situation, bro, you gotta, if you buy a loadout, you gotta throw that shit. You got to. He's just holding on to it for dear life. 
saving it for a rainy day all right so we have our loadout coming in he's gonna go ahead and make his way to the vehicle throw the trophy system on it that way it prevent look most of you guys know this but i'm gonna touch on it because there are a lot of new players not a lot but there are a few new players around here especially watching this video trophy systems when you're playing a solo gameplay whether you're playing solos solo duos solo trios whatever the case or any mode for that matter but especially when you're by yourself you're gonna want to navigate around the map as fast as possible now i'm not telling you guys to jump in a car and just drive circles around the enemies trying to splat them don't do that you want to use vehicles to get from one spot to another as quickly as possible and the best way to do that is go ahead and throw in a trophy system on the vehicle that way it protects you from all incoming lethals and rpgs and shit like that all right again that was pretty basic tip but i want to kind of include all the basics the advanced everything that i can in a video because there are again there are all forms of players watching these vods now we do have two more guys to this to the uh northeast 60. let's see how he approaches this grabbing his loadout the enemy's holding the angle because he knows we're here we left our vehicle but it's not a big deal we do have plenty of cover Enemies going inside, closing the door, and then reopening it. Yeah, not really sure what he was doing on that one. He was more worried about getting the doors open to close than he was anything else. He had a good angle on us. If he would have held that corner, or if he would have mounted that corner, if he would have peeked that corner, he could have caught us as we were pushing in the open. As far as the way we were playing, that's fine. I love the aggression. I love going in with it and just listen to the footsteps and the things going on around you. We heard the door close. We assumed the enemy was messing with the door. We go in there, and sure enough, he was, and we're able to hit him from behind by surprise but as far as that player is concerned guys again if you know where an enemy is he knew where we were at you need to hold the angle or try to force an outplay don't run back in a building and closing doors just to avoid the fight you will get destroyed if you show any signs of weakness in a gunfight against anybody who's half decent enemy UAV overhead. <clears throat> All right, here we are now bounty hunting another bounty coming up by the hangers area to the northeast as well now this is going to be a very interesting place to push i love it i love i'm for it definitely get it done but how you play this area is very important you got to be fast with everything be in be out hit building the building the building fight these guys as fast as possible because i want you guys to notice right now on the mini map what the hell's going on the reason why this is probably one of the hottest compounds um to actually fight in is because there's so much going on around us look at this we have an enemy in the building right here. We have an enemy approaching the buy station by police station. We have an enemy over here at this buy station. And there was another ping somewhere around this hangar as well. There it is. And the reason I'm pointing these out is because this is how people get third partied. And there's a lot of people in the comments saying, Savage, how do I avoid getting third partied? When your guns fights fast and get the hell out of there. When you make noise and there's other players around you, whether they're passive or not, they're going to try to come take advantage of you and shoots you in the back so as soon as you realize an enemy's there try your best to fight them as fast as possible once you engage the fight as fast as possible try to win the gunfight as fast as possible and then get the hell out of there grab his loot and roll out there's no reason to overstay our welcome we got one kill that there we go and again also from this point if you're playing from an aggressive standpoint you want to get more kills screw the third party you want to get more kills so make sure you're going ahead and, and hunt these down before they end up running away because they realize you're closer here we have an enemy driving a birthday. He hops out of the truck when he didn't register that. We need to jump off the building. I what I would have done in this position, jump off the building and come in through the other door. We're going to sit here and hold this angle, which is still going to work. But just from the mindset, what the f is going on? But just from the mindset of winning the fights as fast as possible, the moment that vehicle went from red to white, I would have jumped off that rooftop, come in the door and shot his ass in the back as he's running up the stairs. Now, a lot of people might think that that's a dumb idea. They might be like, Savage, well, you're losing the high ground. You're right, but I'm pretty confident myself to uh, jump off this bitch and get that kill. I love how he's playing this, too. He's, he's... Look at this fight right now. Look at this fight. Now, you got to give the enemy some credit. Enemy's working the windows. He's working the buildings. He's playing the corners. He's throwing nades to suppress to get himself out of a bad spot. He played the fight really well. He did. Um, he probably should have put a little bit more fire on us as he's jumping out of the window He should predict that we were gonna do the same if I was in the enemy's position as I was jumping out the window I would have turned around and looked at the window just to make sure if he would have turned around and looked at us as we're jumping out He probably could have got some shots off granted His health was pretty screwed up. He probably still would have got out shot But it's still something you guys need to pay attention for always try your best to predict what the enemy's gonna do
but yeah going back to that fight and again dude it's all about how you win the fight there's many tactics you guys can do and just do the tactic that's best for you like i said dude i would have jumped off the roof and shot him from the ground floor up in the back as he rang up the staircase that's just something i capitalize on every time in a fight what mr f did here is he played the rooftop and he maintained high ground and he took advantage of every pick that he could the moment he broke the enemy's armor he went in for the chase and he got the kill so the point of that is a thousand different play styles find the one that works for you all right so we're gonna be bounty hunting which is absolutely awesome we're gonna be able to analyze a lot of gunfights that's something i specifically want to hit in this video forget about what to buy forget about rotations i really want to talk about the gunfights and what the enemies are doing as well as us and kind of walk you through that process and here we have a vehicle pushing up this look at him all right number one right well, this is this is something most players most players uh need to get out the habit of the moment he bails from the vehicle the vehicle in the mini map goes from red to white now i get it not every time savage sometimes it stays red it's a glitch i know it's a glitch that ravensoft hasn't removed out the uh out the game yet but i want you guys to notice something notice what the enemy does with the vehicle he's looking at it right so from our standpoint if you're going to be taking vehicles and jumping out of enemies this is what you do you pull up as close to the enemy as possible you jump out of that bitch that way the enemy will probably get distracted and look at the vehicle and it gives us time to get the drop on the enemy now from the enemy standpoint if you guys are falling into this stop it right stop tracking the vehicle pay attention and watch the driver in the vehicle the moment you don't see the driver in that bitch start looking around and snap on the enemy always keep your eyes on the prize not what the prize is wrapped in that was fire all right i'm assuming to go ahead go up the silo next to us and get that bounty objective boom there it is i love it i love it also i want to point out we haven't been to a buy station at all we haven't bought nothing we haven't even looked at a buy station we have this momentum we have these uavs we have this cash all thanks to the players that we're killing again guys i also want to point out this is not a looter these types of games battle royales is not about looting it's about getting kills and winning right all right here we are playing bumper cars with the enemy now this is a dangerous thing we can't really jump out on the enemy i'm so glad you did that bro we can't really jump out on the enemy because if we do he may splat us and yeah we can run back to the car and, and play this ring around the rosy bullshit with it but we run a chance of getting third party we see that a lot in people's gameplays as well um i love this right here this is a ta tactic we used back in PUBG, blackout and all these other brs that i've played over the years this is what you do you switch seats that way you're still maintaining the cover from the vehicle you don't jump out to get splatted and you can still put shots on the enemy we get the armor break and look at the shots baby oh oh the amax still slaps so much ass i love it all right so guys basically the moral story of that fight is if you're in a situation where you're in a vehicle another vehicle is kind of messing with you and y'all are like playing this bumper cars just switch seats shoot at the enemy and get the kill all right so we have a bounty it looks like he may be working his way to us never mind it moved back we recognize that and we instantly we instantly go to the buy station and this again is reaction time and i want you to see how he processes the information that he gets from the mini map and he instantly incorporates it into his gameplay now this is not a fight this doesn't seem drastic but i trust me this is very important for a lot of you players i would probably go off a limb and say 50 percent of players in general um don't look at their mini map ever literally ever unless they're bored and they're just kind of running but in the middle of a fight in the middle of doing shit, like right now we're buying we're at a buy station we're in the middle of doing shit. We're still paying attention to the minimap so we notice that the ping is actually looks like it's coming to us it's, it's on our side of the street um so he jumps out the vehicle and then he's like oh shit. he's coming closer let me go ahead and get back in the vehicle and that's exactly what he does right. then the ping adjusts like oh nope he's running away from us so we instantly get out of the vehicle and go back to the buy station again doesn't seem like a big deal but just analyzing and breaking down that information in real time is just something i really want to point out to you guys start paying attention to the damn minimap savage why did you just rant for four minutes on the mini map i'm sorry bro i can't help it all right here we have an enemy we're approaching him he knows we're approaching him he's got a bounty let's see how he plays this be advised uav is bingo fuel rtv for resupply all right he's actually playing it somewhat decent the enemy's actually got the right idea instead of just cornering himself in the building he's playing the edges he's playing the barricades he's trying his best to actually outplay us which is something you see very rarely usually they just sit in the building and just wait for us to come to him 
All right, he's actually looks like he's gonna be wrapped around the right hand side. He's trying to get to the high ground. We recognize that and we're gonna try to beat him to the fence. Now, the reason why it's very important to go ahead and beat the enemy to this building is because that's a lot of cover, right? And he's got the high ground. The last thing you wanna do is allow the enemy to maintain this high ground and then use this fence or this building to put pressure on us because look where we're at. We're out in the open. So we need to go ahead and close this gap as fast as possible before the enemy has an option to essentially not really gatekeep us, but kind of gatekeep us, basically um, not allow us to run to them. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Enemy UAV. Holy sh**, enemy got some good shots on that one. Now, normally what I would do with that situation is the moment that we were reading the ping was on the right side, I would have threw a stun grenade. I would have threw a stun grenade and stunned his ass, but we don't have stun grenades. So what we had to do with the heartbeat sensor we have, we just had to play it a little bit slower. We had to wait for the enemy to make a mistake, which he did, and we had to take advantage of that. Now, as far as the enemy standpoint, he, sh he should have just played the corners and started peeking us and trying to get some shots off on us. Again, we're kind of in the open. We had a little bit of concealment, but not much cover. He could have probably outshot us if he would have actually played the corners, took some shots, got some picks, broken the armor, and then capitalized on it. Ain't no tips for this, guys. It, just, it is what it is. Also, guys, positioning is extremely crucial. It's probably one of the most important things in the game. But... Weird, right? Weird. Weren't we just talking about this? Weren't we just talking about this? What do most enemies do when you pull up on them with a vehicle? This, right? Stop this. A lot of the times when you guys watch high tier players, what are they doing? They're driving around the vehicles with trophy systems on it and they're jumping out of enemies. And you, you may be wondering how are they dropping 30 kills and things like that. This is how, this is exactly how. Didn't even look at us. Didn't even shoot his gun. Didn't even get the chance to see us. I'll drive. Stop following the vehicle with, the, with your crosshair, right? Keep your eye on the ball. If you're into sports, keep your eye on the ball. The vehicle's not the damn ball, all right? That's the bat. Keep your eye on the ball. That's us. I hope that made sense. That might, that might be garbage. But regardless, guys, if y'all are tired of playing games tired as hell, you know, it's been a slow two years. It's been really rough on a lot of us. It's a lot. It's really hard to get energy nowadays. Um, if you guys need some energy to get cracked out, make sure you try sneak. This shit is the bomb. I would not rep it if I didn't agree with it. This shit gets me so gassed up and I'm old as hell. If I can have this much energy, so can you. Use code SAVAGE at purchase. Links in the description below. Anyway, enough of this. Now we have a fight. Big Bertha pushing us. We have a UAV we can call in if we want, which I'm definitely not against. Um, but the enemy has got ghosts. All right, a couple things I want to address here after this fight. All right, the problem I have with this right now is we don't really see the enemy, so he could be rotating on us. So the longer we hold that angle, the more opportunity the enemy has to try to try to flank us, essentially. Now, this dude's, this dude's really good. He's taking side steps, trying to peek, trying to take some shots on us. Every time he gets a hit, he moves his body to a different location. It's exactly what you should be doing. You see what it's doing to us right now? The fact that the enemy's moving around, it confuses us. It, it's leaving us... It's leaving us vulnerable. We don't have the ability just to look at one direction to, and focus on that and get the easy kill. This enemy is playing the area to his advantage. He's trying his best to confuse us. And you see, dude, Mr. F went from just bam, 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 knocking out to holy shit. He's got a fight on his hands and he doesn't really know how to play it. This is the position you want to force the enemies that you're fighting into. Leave them back, leave them away, leave them a little hesitant in making decisions and just keep playing the area to your advantage. Now, as far as what the enemy is doing, he's doing the right thing, but I think he's being a little hesitant now. He should, he should be playing a little bit more aggressive than this. Because he's got the right idea, but he's keeping too much separation. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so when we pulled up on this fight, the first thing that I noticed was we both jumped out the vehicle. Um, what we could have done, if you notice here, 
the moment he jumped out of the vehicle i would have wanted the high ground he pulled up right here i would have jumped from this wall jumped on top of it and try to maintain that high ground and shoot down on the enemy granted you are vulnerable up there but i would have tried that instantly gotten some shots off if i felt like i wasn't comfortable then i'd jump off and play that building but but that's one of the ways you win the fights fast and efficiently also too the fact that that fight took us a little longer and mr f played it great um just some things i would change but because that fight took us longer, we were pretty vulnerable from the edge of the circle. Notice the circle edge right now is rotating in. If there happened to have been an enemy there and we're kind of sitting there on this side of the wall, fighting the enemy and playing and looking around, distracted with the fight at hand, we could have got sniped from somebody with the Carnet 98. Thankfully, that wasn't the case and no one was there. But there's some things you always got to kind of plan for. Also, guys, just because I went ahead and did a shameless self promo, um, top flavors, three top flavors of choice because everyone always asks me: raspberry lemonade, strawberry millions, and blue raspberry. Oh, fire! Absolute goaded flavors, man. Bounty target is up. Let's get it done. Oh shit! The delayed ping. This is what happens. This is why I always tell you guys: don't always like. From this standpoint, it's not a big deal because we're in a vehicle, but if y'all are like in a compound, you're on foot, and you're trying to track the bounty, don't always rely on that ping because it is, it is on a delayed updating system for a reason too. Otherwise it'd be super broken. And as far as this enemy's concerned, even though he's got the bounty on him, he was playing the edge, right? Stop playing the edge of the circle if you're not trying to fight. If your idea of playing the edge is to play passive and as slow as possible, it's the wrong idea playing the edge and doing like the pinwheel motion and all these other strategies out there to get kills is fine but as far as the passive standpoint you want to stay away from the edge of circle as much as possible until we get into an in-game situation and the reason why in-game is so much different is because it's a whole different ball game smaller circle a lot less places to hide more players are condensed together and things like that so right now the enemy just put himself in a position to get gate kept all we got to do is kind of sit here doing whatever wait for the enemy to move out get the pick and that's all she wrote boom now that was ballsy of us to jump out of the vehicle while it was moving and have our mobile cover actually leave us if that guy would have been efficient with the shots we would have been kind of sitting ducks and as far as the enemies playing too look at this right here why was he standing up on top of the fence instead of using the fence as a head glitch start utilizing headies a lot more than you guys already are don't put yourself out in the open if the enemy can see your toes all the way to your head you're doing it wrong fam now I'm gonna say something, we talk about this a lot, but I wanna put it out there and hopefully, you know, maybe one day we'll see it. Um, in Blackout and PUBG, we had modes that were like a fast collapse mode. And the, the point of fast collapse was to speed up the gameplay by like seven, eight minutes. But what it did was it condensed the map faster. That way, right, right now, we have 15 players left in this massive circle. If this was a fast collapse mode, the circle would be okay. twice as small with the same amount of people, if not more. Also, what that does is it prevents people from camping on the edge of the circle for too long because the moment the circle collapses, it starts moving again. There's no downtime. So you're almost forced to rotate consistently. Um, it makes the gameplay, in my opinion, more fun. It makes a lot more fast pace. Um, whether you're winning or losing, it's just more fun altogether. Fight going on inside of here. Here we are utilizing. I love this shit. This is one. Oh, that's unfortunate. There we go. There we go. This is using your tools to the, to the best of your ability. Whether you're using vehicles or anything, if there's a way you can approach a fight without having to go right to a doorway or right up a staircase where the enemy's probably going to be looking, take advantage of it and do it. That right there was a 200 IQ play. Uh, make sure you guys are trying things like this. Guys, if you're bored one day, go around the, the Verdance map for a few hours. Don't even worry about fighting or looting. Just start like vaulting through buildings and finding out different jumps and spots you guys can go. I can make a video on that if you guys like, but I feel like there's so many out there. You guys could just explore so many different options. Um, but oh, look at this guy. <laughs> Yo, he's trying to get a ride, bro. All right, so we see homeboy running from us, right? Homeboy's running from us. We should get the shots off. He breaks away fast as shit. And instead of us just following him like a sheep, we decide to cut him off by playing the box. Around the corner, we get some more shots off. We notice the enemy goes that way. And again, instead of playing like a sheep and following the enemy, and when I mean follow the enemy, I mean like literally walking around and following his every footstep, we again lead and predict the enemy's gonna go, slide to the other side, and get the shots off. It's exactly what you need to do. A lot of times, most of the times, 
when I play against other players, when I'm spectating other players, enemies will freeze up and they'll just play one side of the box. And if they hear you pushing, then they'll look. But by that time, it's too late. You hear the put enemy pushing you, they're already gonna have the drop on you and they slide cancel around that corner and get the shots off. So basically when you're behind cover, whether it's a rock, whether it's a tree, play both sides of it. Make the enemy move his crosshair a little bit. Make him think, make him work. Don't make his job as easy as possible. Make it more difficult. All right, we got a guy laying uh, somewhere in there. He's on the rooftop of the building, actually. He's on the rooftop. We're kind of, we're, we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. Um, <laughs> he's just sitting on the roof. Now, I'm never for camping, ever. And if you guys, if your goal is to get better at this game, you've got to stop doing shit like this. You've got to. Stop sitting still, guys. Start. If you want to sit somewhere and fight an enemy, make sure you have more cover, right? Forget about the fact he was camping. Let's think about where he was camping at. There's nothing up here. There's nothing up here. You notice how when we went to the rooftop police station, we had the AC unit that was protecting us. We had a little ledge like this too, but it's so damn small. It's not really cover at all. Not even concealment. You can see the top of his head. Notice how we had the AC unit. We had something to actually outplay the enemy. He was sitting up here by himself. Yeah, he's got two AC units right here that are against the wall that he can't get behind, right? So if you want to sit somewhere to watch an angle, to wait, his loadout drop came, so I guess that's what he was waiting for. If you have something you're waiting for, a teammate coming back, things like that, make sure if you are sitting still, you have some form of cover around you, not concealment and not a little bitty ledge like this. This ain't shit. Make sure you got something real around you that can protect you. Y'all, now nah, I'm gonna be honest. I had no idea that dude was in there. I'm gonna be honest. I had no freaking idea. Now, Mr. F went in there to clear it just in case. He saw the loadout behind it. I guess he thought that maybe the guy on the roof didn't call that in. Great analyzation by him. Cause again, I, I wouldn't have done that. I probably would have died to that guy. Um, but again, notice how he was just sitting there in the corner. The enemy, once again, sitting in the corner, confused at why he died. All right, in-game situation now. The circle's still relatively big, so we don't really have to worry about rotations at this point, if that's what you're worried about. We're still going on a kill hunt. Uh, we've got four out of the eight enemies marked by the UAV. Actually, five out of the eight enemies marked on the UAV, and we're trying to analyze the easiest target to hunt down right now. Also, if we get this kill and we get his money, we could potentially get cash for a UAV and some other cool shit. Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Look at this. No. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. If you guys think that camping on this tower or ever being on this tower is a good idea for any reason ever in the history of anything, you're wrong. You're so terribly wrong. Dude, even, even if we don't kill him, even if he kills us, he's making noise, he's shooting tracers, other enemies around him will eventually realize that he's up there. And when the circle does move to the east, which it will, he's gonna have to jump out of that bitch or climb down the ladder. At that point, what's his game plan? Nothing. He's just hoping and praying that nobody's gonna be around him when he needs to bail off that bitch. But this is a, that's a death sentence. If you guys go to this tower, it is a death sentence. Stop this shit, please. Now, we gotta be careful about the guy on our left-hand side. It may be the same player. I doubt it. I doubt it. We gotta watch the guy on the left-hand side. This, we could potentially get third party right now. So we need to win this fight fast as f or bail out of it altogether and fight it later on. I'm pretty worried about the dude to the guy in the gas station. I'm gonna be honest. I'll drive. All right, jump in the car. The circle's closing in right now. We gotta separate ourselves from the edge. That's clear. Get to better cover. That way we can continue the fight. I'll just never understand. I'll never get it. I'll never get it. Now, a lot of people come at me like Savage. There's a lot of kids that play the game, this and that. And I get that. But even as a kid, it doesn't matter. You're, if you're a gamer, you're a gamer. Like This should be common sense in my eyes, right? I mean, am I wrong for thinking that? I know when I was young and playing Call of Duty, I would never do some shit like this. That's just bad. Oh, weird. Oh, absolutely the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. He died. Why? Because he parachuted down. How do we know he's going to do that? Because it's the only thing he can do. Weird, weird. All right, the circle's dying off relatively slow. I think we're the only ones actually getting kills out here. Um, the Big Bertha's still driving around out there to the South 195, just basically doing donuts. Not really, not really doing anything. We're all we're doing right now is baiting for shots. We're waiting for someone to shoot at us. 
taking advantage of the ammo we're plated up ready to go no one's shooting there's two vehicles driving around so three of the seven enemies are in vehicles four other players running around somewhere you can guarantee there's gonna be one player by fire station you can guarantee there's gonna be one player over here at the very least I want you guys to notice whenever we're peeking an area he always uses like a ledge or a ridge and he kind of bounces behind it right he keeps his head moving he's always he's always just he always tries to keep his eyes on the enemy or where he thinks the enemy's going to be at working our way up on the roof now this is dangerous just like i said just like i said about the guy we killed when we were on police station this is dangerous oh no because we don't have covered outplay the enemy. Can we get up as fast as possible? Holy shit, we did. Woo! Now, as far as the enemy's concerned, we call the cluster on us. He bailed off for whatever reason. He should have held that angle. The moment we got up from, from self-resing and jumping off that ledge, we were one tap. If he could have just held that spot on us, held that angle and gotten the shot off, all he had to do was hit us one time to get the kill. But he jumped off the roof, bailed out, relied too much on his cluster strike to go for the execution. The enemy definitely should have just waited patiently and outplayed that situation. There he's in the window right there. Oh, he, he he was a little bit hesitant. He didn't really think it was the enemy, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Got to be a little bit quicker with that one. This is what I'm talking about. This is the guy that's literally been driving in circles the whole time. And now look, look where the vehicle got disabled at. It's it's in the kill box. It's literally in the middle of a ravine. You have a, a few bushes you can hide in, but no matter what happens, whether we kill him or not, someone's gonna kill his guy. Someone's gonna kill his dude. Now, before anyone starts saying in the comments, this dude's sus, how do he know? The reason why he knew right there, right? He saw his head peek up right there. This goes back to noticing movement. Do you, do you guys think this is a player just from glancing at it? No, but it moves. So if it moves, you gotta shoot it, right? He instantly saw it move to the bush. He snaps to it and knocks him the f out. There the guy is back on the rooftop. Now at this point in the match, when he was on the roof initially and he had the drop on us, it was a good idea to stay on the roof and hold it using the AC unit that he had as cover. Now with the circle moving out, this dude should have been rotated. The moment that the enemy right here heard us shooting an enemy in a whole different direction, he should use that time to push across the street, which is open with no cover. He should use that time to push across the street and force his way to us, closing the gap while we were preoccupied with someone else. But because he waited, because he hesitated, and he just played really slow, He's going to die. Now here we are in a 1v1v1, one guy in a vehicle. Again, another position where you just, all you gotta do is disable the vehicle. Just put some shots on it, force the enemy out. We're low on ammo, unfortunately, but we're gonna take advantage of, we're gonna take advantage of the enemy's slow reaction time, his bad movement, and his surprise, right? Wow, look at this. Okay, so where did the enemy go wrong? He didn't even try looking at us. He just runs to the door. That's all he does. He's not worried about looking at the rooftop or anything like that. When the enemy's in this position, even if you want to run forward, you got to look, right? You can still run forward and look up at the same damn time. Now, when we jump down on him, the enemy predicted we were going to do this. But what the enemy should have done instead of just forcing himself in a building was he should have run through both of the doors, run around and circle back behind us. Here, I'm going to show you. See this door right here, right? We predict that the enemy's going to come in here and sit up. Why do we predict that? Because it's what most players do. He should have just run through both of these doors, worked himself around the right-hand side and circled behind us and got the shot off. Would have been really easy. Granted, yes, you can hear footsteps, but it's still a better option than this shit here. What? All, the only person you should be mad at right now is yourself, brother. That's it. This is by way, bro, it's by way. All right, got another self-res and we're able to buy some more plates. So we're almost fully stocked up, ready to go. Now, when you're in a situation like this, you guys need to analyze the entire area, the entire situation. If, if you're in a gunfight and it's the beginning of the game or it's the end of the game, if you're in a gunfight in general and you know there's an enemy out there, but you're not sure exactly where, stay out of your scope. Look around the entire thing. If he was to zoom in right now and just ADS, he'd be moving really slowly. His body would be stationary. He'd be a very easy target. And also his field of view would be cut in half. So you gotta stay out of your sights. You gotta look around, look for movement, look for glare, look for anything that's not supposed to be there. There's the movement. 
He notices it, snaps on it. Now we have the advantage because he's going to have to work his way to us out in the open, switching from the Amax to a Car 98 because we definitely should. And all we got to do is wait for the enemy to peek and try to make a run for it. But Mr. F, my dude, thank you again for submitting the gameplay, brother. GG. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel today. And again, the purpose of this content is to put you in the shoes of other players to help you walk through the mindset that they may play in. Guys, adapting to situations requires the ability to change your format and change your gameplay on the fly. Most players that play this game, I know I'm being very general, but most players that play this game have one strategy in mind and one strategy only. You guys need to adapt to every situation. A BR in general requires multiple levels of strategy, multiple levels of mindset, the ability to go from passive to aggressive on the fly, but regardless, you guys can not accomplish this. And again, the whole purpose of this is not to show you high octane gameplay all the time, I want you guys to see the mistakes. I want you guys to see the good things. I want you guys to see every possible strategy and every possible gunfight, and every possible location on the map that we can possibly get into. That was a lot of possibles, but y'all have a good one. Enjoy your day. And until next time, Wolfpack, good luck in Warzone.